Africa Rising is something that I think we will all be hearing about around the world. And Daba Mandela, welcome. Thank you. So before we go any further, you are a relative? Yes, I'm a grandson. Grandson of the famous uh, Nelson Mandela, now you're making your own way. That's right. Tell us about Africa Rising. Well, you know, um, just to simply put it, Africa Rising is a youth organization uh, for youth development. Mm -hmm. uh, and really why we started it is because uh, in 2009 when we were here uh, during the 4664 concert, uh, we realized that people around the world outside of Africa have very limited knowledge on Africa. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to start a vehicle, a platform, an organization that would be able to start dispelling some of these um, misconceptions mm -hmm. and really engage with them on a positive level. Um, so we decided the best way to do that would be through empowering the youth through education, entrepreneurship development, and celebrating African culture in order to, to raise the pride and confidence so when they do engage with the outside world, they speak about Africa with a certain level of pride. Hmm. What are some of the misconceptions? Well, I mean, you know, the typical stuff that you see on the world media, you know, that Africa is a place of war, poverty, and dire need of assistance, hmm. um, and full of corruption, and really the only positive aspect being safari. You know, so those are, those are the real the misconceptions that people have. You know, we want people to know that Africa is also a place where you can do business. Uh, you know, you can access new markets. It's a place where you can bring your family for holiday. You know, it's not as dangerous um, as, as you, you may think it is or they make it seem in the, in the media. What's, this, what's the spirit of the young people of Africa like? Well, right now I could tell you that the, the, the young people are, are somewhat frustrated because they're not able to to realize or to engage in some of the economic participation, uh, the robust sort of political conversation that's taking place on the ground right now. Because we have been really, I guess, somewhat uh, not, um, uh, the, the leadership, I think, is, is the big question. And, uh, and a lot of the current leaders, I think, the youth feel that they are not representing them uh, the right way. So. As much as there's that frustration, there's also a lot of uh, positivity mm -hmm. because the youth are now starting to realize that they have the, the potential to actually control their own destiny. However, they do not, it's not organized, it's not structured, mm -hmm. you know, so that is where we come in as Africa Rising to, to sort of mobilize and organize the youth in order to uh, channel that energy in a very positive way. How, you, how are you doing that? How are you doing the organization? Because, you know, it's tough. I just, I just have children at home, and it's tough organizing, too. So. <laughs> yeah, so basically when we started, what we did, we reached out to our friends, you know, our immediate sort of social network, and we let them know that we wanted to, you know, start this organization, and we, we got the input as to what are some of the... Uh, challenges or what are some of the goals that we should be trying to achieve. So through that we're able to then access their friends, their network and, and so that's how it's branched off. So we started in Cape Town and then now we, we are in Johannesburg and um, we really have, um, you know, it's still starting out small because we've been really doing the internal um, management and the, and the governance of the organization. So now we are almost at the stage where we're really t uh, ready to engage with the public on a very you know, hard sort of um, capacity. That's going to be our strategy, I would say, over the next uh, year, um, starting early next year. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's really just you know, using the networks that you have in order to access other networks. Um, and that's how we've been uh, able to, to sort of organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is, does technology play a role? It does, of course. I mean, you, you look at the Twitter, Facebook, uh, mobile phones. It's, it's, it's really how young people today are communicating. Um, so we definitely do use uh, technology. And the education focus that you talked about, is there a, um, a specific general topic that uh, young people in Africa are, are wanting to become educated about, or they just want more school? They do want more school. They want more education. Um, so we have actually designed a program, an education program, which is our flagship program, mm -hmm. uh, which really, um, you know, goes into a school. And we all, all obviously look at mostly the, the schools in the rural areas 
as well as the, the township areas, which are the, the poorest areas. Mm -hmm. um, and we do workshops, basically, with the, with the students in terms of upscaling their study skills. They also do a, a workshop with the student governing body, uh, which is mostly the parents, so making them understand what the student needs to, in order to be sufficiently prepared for school on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And then they also do a workshop with the, with the teachers you know, primarily the, the principal, the deputy, as well as the financial manager of the school to make sure that the school is running efficiently, you know, like a business. And a lot of the schools, you go in and they don't even have a mission or a vision that's set out for the school. So we're putting, you know, small things like that in place, which are very important that people, you know, uh, tend to, to miss out on. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really the, the whole thing. You know, we call it the Africa Rising Leadership Development Program. So mostly it's also about educating, you know, the South Africans about the rest of the continent, uh, which is obviously where we're starting out. Yeah. Uh, you were educated yourself right there in South Africa, right? That's right. That's right. Um, high school as well as my, uh, I got a BA in political science and um, international relations at the University of Pretoria. Hmm. So um, if it, are you saying if it worked for you, it can work for other people too? Um, and uh, yes, of course it can work. And Daba, what do you do to, to uh, work with families and, and others to help people get ready to be prepared for school? Well, obviously we, we engage with them really on a face-to-face on -face level. We, we actually go into the school and, and speak to them because a lot of the time these schools are very poor and they do not have access uh, to, to textbooks. I mean, if you look at, uh, at our this year, in the recent uh, weeks, you know, we've had a big sort of uh, issue with the delivery of textbooks. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we really try and assist in terms of gathering people and making sure that they are ready for school so they can be able to, to maximize in terms of what a school is really providing for them. Um, and really, you know, where the school is unable to, to, to do those things. Because a lot of schools as well, if you look at South Africa, we do not have computer literacy programs mm -hmm. on a high school level. So those are some of the things that we try to, to engage with, you know. Mm -hmm. We do not have computers because of the resources are very, very limited. But uh, you probably have a lot of cell phones, right? A lot of cell phones, A lot yeah. of texting is going yes. on. Yes. <laughs> so the reason that I said that is, is because uh, so many students here in the United States are, are going towards um, communicating via texting, and that is a primary way of, of getting messages out. It is, especially for the youth, you know, we're uh, uh, the, the thumb generation, <laughs> you know, um, so it's really the primary way to communicate. You also talked about entrepreneurship and business uh, uh, interest from the youth in Africa. What are the types of, uh, of business interests that they have? Well, it, it varies across the board, you know, uh, whether it be mining, whether it be just getting into the media, the marketing space. Um, agriculture as well is quite big if you go to the the other provinces outside of the, the city centers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the, the issue and the problem is becomes lack of access to information. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no uh, proper uh, mentors. Mentorship is also something that is, is quite lacking uh, in, in these, in these, for the youth. So they, they feel very frustrated because they, they, they're quite ambitious, but they're unable to then translate that into uh, actual, um, actual work. Mm. So it, be, it becomes somewhat frustrating, but it's, it's really across the board. Sounds like there's a, a large potential for partnership. Definitely, definitely. And that's what we, that's what we're here for, uh, you know, attending the, the CGI in America. We've done quite a, a few um, um, press conferences in Paris and Belgium, uh, as well as Nigeria, you know, to mm -hmm. try and gather partnerships to make them understand uh, and aware that Africa is at the point now of... Uh, wanting to partner and work with people in order to, to really get development uh, running on, off the ground. And obviously we uh, really particularly look at the youth segment mm -hmm. of it. People, particularly youth, oftentimes don't have a whole lot of patience. Mm. Uh, I suspect that uh, it will take patience for uh, you to become successful with the Africa rising in terms of, of truly rising up. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take and what do you think it's going to take to make it happen? Well, I mean, it could take anything from, uh, in terms of us starting to really rise, I think it could take probably another 
eight months to a year from now before mm -hmm. you really see us uh, taking off. As That's a very short time. It's very short, but uh, like I said, we're at that stage now yeah. um, of really engaging with the public. Um, and then I would say anything between a year to, to the next three years is when you really see uh, a lot of uh, movement uh, for Africa Rising. And, you know, for us, because we really believe in the principle of uh, together we stand, divided we fall. That is one of our mottos mm -hmm. at Africa Rising. And we're really looking to partner, you know. So to say that through collaboration and consolidation of African youth across the continent, also looking at the African diaspora across the world, mm -hmm. you know, everybody who cares about the development of Africa, you know, those are the people we're really trying to, to, to tap into. Mm -hmm. And already, you know, during our press conferences in different parts of the world, we've had huge interest. You know, there's a lot of Africans in the diaspora who live in Europe and Asia and America who want to contribute to, to development on the continent. So whether it be education, whether it be playing a role of a mentor, whether it be financially assisting, but they just do not have the, the, the channels to do that. So that is also one of the roles that we, we're going to be playing. You know, it's putting them in touch with the right um, platforms, organizations, where they want to uh, participate. It's a, that's a big responsibility that you're, you're taking on for yourself. Are you ready for the challenge? We are ready for the challenge. I mean, it's, it all happens one day at a time. You know? So for now, we're really concentrating in South Africa. And then with each year, we want to then expand to another African country. So we've already had interest from Gabon, as well as the Democratic Republic of Congo, who want us to take some of our programs to their countries and start uh, getting them um, off the ground as of next year. You know what? We're all going to be watching Africa Rising. And Dava, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much, Stan.